In this video, we're going to look at example seven from our notes in section 2.5. So now we're going to look at an application of derivatives in business. So this problem says the cost to produce X items is the square root of X in hundred of dollars. So if we want to write the situation as a function, we could say C, the cost to produce X items is equal to square root of X. Now part A says, what is the cost for producing a hundred items? So to compute that cost, we would just plug in 100 for X. C of 100 is equal to square root of 100. So that would be square root of 100 is just 10. So recall this is in hundreds of dollars. So to produce a hundred items, we would have 10 times 100. So I've included two more, two more zeros, uh, dollars. So a thousand total dollars. So then what about 101 items? So I encourage you to pause the video right now and work out that uh, for yourself. And when you're ready, let's compare answers. So we do the same setup, but now we're gonna plug in 101 into our cost function. So we have the square root of 101. So we could consult our calculator to see what that gets us. So I'll allow you to pause the video now and find that square root. We should be getting something around 10.0499. And so that, now that's in hundreds of dollars. So if you want, you could write that instead as 1,004.99. So now the next question says, what is the cost of the 101st item? So essentially that means how much more does it cost to produce 101 items versus 100 items? So to produce that one extra item, how much does it cost? Well, we'd say, well, what's the cost of those 101 items? minus the cost to produce the first 100. So that would mean subtracting these two numbers. So if we subtract those, 1,004.99 minus 1,000, we see that we get around 4.99. So what we just computed is the cost to produce that 101th item, right after producing all of the previous 100. So this number that we just found, what we saw in our previous Math 147, is our marginal cost. And that's how we computed marginal cost in our previous course. But now, what we've learned from our first videos, our week, uh, previous week videos, is that we can compute marginal cost using a derivative. And that's what Part B will ask us. So for, this, for a function, f of x equals square root of x, Calculate the derivative and evaluate the derivative at x equals 100. How does the derivative of our function at 100 compare with the last answer in part A? So here we're using f's, but we could use c of x, like our cost function, if we'd like. But we're just keeping notation with f just so that it's more familiar, because that's what we've been seeing so far. All right, so let's do this. So first, we need to calculate f prime of x. So we saw this in the previous example, but we see that f of x equals square root. I can rewrite that as these x to the 1 half rather than the square root of x. So now if I want to compute the derivative, I'm just going to use the power rule. So that 1 half power comes down, and I have x to the 1 half minus 1, which just becomes 1 over 2 root x. And recall, that's just from combining 1 half minus 1 gives me negative 1 half. So I move that x to the denominator so that negative exponent becomes positive. Positive 1 half exponent is the same thing as square root of 2. All right, so here's where the fun begins. So now let's determine f prime of 100. So I'm just going to consult my derivative function that we already computed. So I would get 1 over 2 root 100. 1 over 2 root 100. Well, root 100 is just 10. So I get 1 over 2 times 10 or 1 over 20. So what is 1 over 20 in decimal? So we can consult our calculator. We see 1 over 20 is equal to 0 0.005. 
And so now if we were considering this F function as our cost, this output would be in hundreds of dollars. So converting that into hundreds of dollars, we'd multiply by 100. And what we see in the end is we get five. Five dollars. So by using this technique of computing the derivative and evaluating that derivative at the item that we're interested in, we will get that very close to what we just computed as marginal cost. Now you might say, well, they differ by a penny, so this might have a big effect. And that's true. Uh, a penny for one item might have a big effect if our item actually costs more than just five dollars. But this method of using the derivative is actually more precise because in our previous measurement, we had to round here. This 0 0.0499 was rounding with our calculator. And we also see that this computing the derivative, once we get become more comfortable computing derivatives, uh, will be a lot more uh, straightforward of a computation than having to compute a marginal cost like we uh, did in previous classes of needing to subtract the two uh, values. All right, thanks for watching. Please feel free to rewatch any of this video uh, to deepen your understanding of this example.